Think of your run as the filling to a sandwich, and a sandwich needs a layer of bread on either side of it. Well, that's how I want you to think about your pre and post running routine. Yes, obviously the middle bit is essential to improving, but what you do before and after is also gonna have a significant impact on your rate of progression. And that's where we're gonna be focusing today on how we can improve those pre and post run routines. What you do before and after a run should look entirely different because, well, they've got completely different goals. Obviously, for a warm-up, you're trying to get your body warm and ready for that run, and then your cool down, you're having the complete opposite goal. So we might as well start at the beginning with the pre-run routine. Now, this is aimed at getting your heart rate up, your blood flowing, muscles warm, and also getting your mind in the right state. And you should make sure you include some sort of warm-up unless you're doing something as light as a gentle jog or a steady run. Otherwise, the warm-up is key. Start off with a gentle jog. If you're not really awake or you've been sitting still for a while, there's nothing wrong with a walk to get things moving before you step it up. I'd recommend a minimum of 10 minutes easy jogging. Feel free to make this social or use it to get to wherever you plan to start your main run session. Once you've completed your jog warm-up, it's important to keep warm, especially if you're in colder climates. So the rest of the warm-up needs to make sure that it's dynamic and moving. And the type of warm-up and the intensity of it will depend on how tough your main set's going to be and how fast and the demands you're going to be putting on your body. Say a 200 meter effort's on the track, you're going to need a very different warm-up to say a 30 minute tempo run. But today we're going to use an example and imagine we are doing a tough track session and so it's going to be quite a thorough warm-up and then you can always scale that back to suit your own requirements. I personally love to include some dynamic movements and stretches into my pre-warm-up routine. They help open up my hips and get my torso moving. We'll leave static stretches until the end. So for now, it's focusing on keeping that movement going. And for these, it's a good idea you find something to hold on to because it will be a little bit of a test on your balance, but we want to make sure you can perform these exercises correctly without worrying about falling over. Leg swings, these are brilliant for hip openers. And we've got two types here. We're gonna start with the forwards and backwards ones. So you wanna make sure that your toe is constantly facing forward. So ideally hold on to something so you've got that balance and you're simply gonna swing your leg forwards. And as it comes forward, you'll start to feel a gentle stretch at the back of your thigh, so in your hamstring area. And then as your leg swings back again, you'll feel a bit of a stretch opening up the front of your hip. If you are feeling coordinated, then feel free to add in that spare arm to really add with a bit more of a torso movement as well. And then we've got crossbody leg swings. So for this, it's a good idea to hold on to something in front of you with both your hands. You're going to have a slight lean forwards because your other leg is going to be coming across in front of your body and across the standing leg. So as you swing across in front of that leg, you'll feel a bit of a stretch across your glute and your abductors. And then when you swing your leg back out, you'll feel a bit of a stretch on the groin, the inside of your leg, on your adductors. And this is, again, another great one. It gets a bit more of a movement around the torso and just helps get those hips ready and moving. Right, onto walking lunges, and these are a great activator of the muscles as well as working in a bit of a dynamic stretch. So as you'd expect, you are doing lunges but moving forward. So take a large step forwards, you drop down with your back knee almost reaching the ground, so you'll feel a stretch on that opposite hip flexor, and then stand up so you're walking forwards in a march position. If you want to challenge your core, you can even try and hold that on one leg foot momentarily before stepping forwards with the next leg. And during these, you can add in a twist with your torso if that's something you like, you can stretch up with your hands to open up the front. It's really something you can adapt to work for you. Mm -hmm. 
if you're worried about your heart rate dropping too much in this warm up, this one is going to solve it. It's high knees, and you can't really do this without a quite a lot of intensity. It's a really simple exercise. I'm sure it's something you've done since primary school. You can do it jogging on the spot or progressing forwards ever so slightly. But the idea is trying to get your knee up to hip height, so at a right angle, just keeping your body nice and upright with really good form, driving with your arms at the same time. And because it's such an intense one, I'd suggest just covering a short distance or doing it for a set amount of time, say, do 20 high knees on each leg whilst you're on the spot. If you want to be really progressive with this, you could make it into high knee skips, but that's probably a little bit more challenging and one for another video. Heel flicks are a nice contrast to the high knees because they're working the posterior chain, so those muscles at the back of your body as opposed to the ones at the front that the high knees did. So for this, it's a good idea to maybe even put your hands on your bottom so you can see how close your heels are getting. You're going to be working your hamstrings in your glutes and simply trying to kick your bottom with your heels. Again, do it on the spot or progressing forwards, whichever you find more comfortable for you. It's still pretty intense, so probably do it for around 20 strides each and then take a rest. Onto side steps, which will just get everything moving a little bit more and get you bouncing and feeling ready to run. So it's pretty simple, as you'd expect, basically galloping sideways. So imagine your body is in between a pane of glass. You want to be nice and upright and narrow. Use your arms to help propel the movement and you're going to be taking nice wide steps in one direction in a straight line. Once you've done 10 to 20 strides one way, then just turn around and come back the other way. This one is one of my favorites, but it might test your coordination slightly. It's side twists. So you're going to be stepping with one foot in front of the other, then the other way around. It's much easier if you look at the demonstration, but use your arms to help and it's a full body twist going sideways, but make sure you do it exactly the same, coming back in the opposite direction. Now for the icing on the warm-up cake, it strides to finish off. So for these, you want to aim to do around three of about 80 to 100 meters. So if you've got a nice straight area, that's perfect. And you want to build up from around 80% of your maximum effort right up through to maximum by the time you finish. And for each one, do the whole distance and then walk back to the start so your legs have plenty of time to recover before the next one. And then at the end of that, you should be feeling absolutely primed and ready to nail your main set. I know we've covered quite a lot of exercises throughout this warm up and I don't want you necessarily doing all of them because you obviously don't want to be tired before you start your main session, but you do want to make sure you're optimally warmed up. So it's up to you to choose what works for you and how much of it you need. You'll be pleased to hear that the post run routine is much lighter in intensity and volume. Admittedly, you can add in some core work, but that is optional. And the type of warm down you're doing will depend and need to reflect the session's intensity and volume that you've also just completed. But for example, today, we are still presuming that you've done a tough track workout. Initially, you need to get that heart rate back down. The quickest way would be to lie down, but let's avoid that for now. You'll feel far worse afterwards. So it's still important to keep the body moving and to not let it get cold. A walk to drop the heart rate is best before your breathing is under control, and then it's time to try and jog. This jog can be as slow as you like. There's no points for winning the warm down. You'll be the one paying for it the next day. Either before or straight after your jog, make sure you put some layers back on, obviously, if you're in cold climate, because once you've got cold, it's so much harder to warm up and you want your body to recover well. After all, that's the whole point of the cool down so that your body can absorb that training and be better prepared to train again the next day. Now on to stretches, and for this, make sure you go somewhere that's warm and comfortable so you can really get into all the areas that need working. And just take it and listen to your body for this. You might know that if you've done a track session, maybe your calves are gonna be extra tight, but you need to do it fairly soon after that jog so that your muscles are still nice and warm and you'll get more of a benefit from it. My local run club actually choose to run a core session straight after Tuesday night track workouts. And that does sound a bit brutal, but in comparison to the hard work you've done on the track, it's really not gonna seem that hard. And it's a great way to get something that's so important done. I mean, you could actually opt to have it 
before your warm up, even before your jog to help getting things activated and firing. But afterwards is equally as effective. And the core, as we know, is a brilliant exercise or really important for making sure that we're going to be running efficiently and you've got the right muscles firing wherever you choose to put it. As you can see, the pre and post run routines do deserve their respect and they're certainly worth having a bit of a think about and planning appropriately according to whatever session you've got in mind. And take from this video all the points that you want and you can devise your own warm up and your own warm down routine to make sure you get the most out of your next training session. Well, hopefully you've enjoyed it. It's given you some ideas and something to go away with. Give us a like if you have. And remember, you can follow us on our social media channels. You can also subscribe to us here on YouTube.